Okay, good afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, anytime you watch this video. This is this year's 215 computer maintenance, computer hardware maintenance and repairs one. Um, I want to continue with the first lecture so that you can get started. I got information that you are still registering. And so I cannot uh, wait. So as you come on board, try to get <clears throat> started, start uh, watching the online lectures and start uh, preparing because we don't have much time for this uh, semester. So as I earlier said <clears throat> in the first video, introduction to computer maintenance, uh, computer hardware maintenance and replace one, where you have been introduced to the syllabus in summary and the practical uh, session topics. So you need to be up and doing. So now I'm gonna do this first lecture um, as I earlier mentioned, I will be taking the lectures group one and three. And so we'll be using video and uh, online and uh, physical contact method. So get ready. Okay. I'll be sharing my slide now so that you can see. I'll be sharing my slide. PowerPoints. I will take the first one. Uh, this is um, computer maintenance of shooting here. From the first topic on our syllabus, we are talking about introduction to computer maintenance, uh, definitions, and all the uh, lab safety produce procedures. I'll be taking that in this video. So take note. Okay, so I'm um, back to um, my screen now. I'm going to, okay. So let me quickly check this off so that I don't have to cover the screen. First, you will want to know is that this course is for the, for both computer science and computer engineering uh, students. Uh, we are welcome to Diploma 2. Congratulations for a successful um, examination that allows you to come to this uh, Diploma 2. I want to encourage you to be very serious because this is a three unit course and you need to do both theory and lab. And uh, we also have continuous assessment. All this will contribute to your final success. Don't wait till the end of the semester to read. And don't say, I'm going to try in the exams. As that now we have CA for the lab, CA for the theory, and they are 2020. So all together you have 40. And now you're going to have 60 marks for the exams. So if you can uh, do well in body assessment for the theory and the lab, you're able to get 40 over 40 or something close, you should be very confident that you can make um, A in this course. So the course is very simple. It's uh, what you can easily touch and feel and practice. And so don't be afraid, this course is gonna be very interesting, I promise you. Now let's talk about what is computer maintenance and troubleshooting. So computer maintenance speaks about the activities carried out in order to have computer systems and subsystems in good working order. 
Yes, Kamala Maintenance speaks about the activities carried out in order to have computer systems and subsystems in good working life. So you get to know what are computer systems, what are computer subsystems as we move on. Now, we need to know that there are three types of uh, maintenance in as applicable to computer hardware or computer systems. Now, we have number one, preventive maintenance. As you can see on the screen, we have number two, corrective or breakdown maintenance. And then we also talk about uh, routine maintenance. Routine maintenance. So let me talk about preventive maintenance. This is the one you perform when the computer is still operating at its efficient level. What I'm trying to do is to prevent degradation of performance, bad performance, slow system, or um, very uncomfortable performance. Like you see things popping up anyhow, you see system hanging and then continue to work. You see system, um, you know, and, uh, 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 button slow, I mean, having boots, I mean, having slow performance uh, during booting and during operation. So all these are what we call degradation of performance. So if you want to prevent that, then there is need for you to carry out regular preventive maintenance. They are to be done even weekly, weekly basis. Uh, this can be uh, talking about um, you know, uninstalling uh, programs that have, you know, be outdated. Um, talk about um, checking your hard disk, uh, doing scan disk or disk check. Uh, this can mean doing, a, a, you know, uh, uh, free more space on your hard drive using a uh, disk cleanup. But these are things you can do regularly, probably weekly, if you are a, 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 a um, if you are using your computer very, uh, very, very seriously. I mean, if you, if, for instance, if you're operating a, um, a computer, center or business center where they type document, where they deal with graphics, where they deal with a lot of things. So more temporary files will be created that can begin to occupy your hard disk space. So all this can lead to degradation of performance. And so it's good for you to do preventive maintenance on a weekly basis. But if you are a light user of computer, so I refer to touch people as every user of computer, when you use computer every day for um, document processing, graphic processing, and photo editing, and video editing, and, uh, you know, all the like. So this can be taken to be heavy users. Or you use it for probably simulation, uh, or you have to simulate almost every day and all that. So you can be taken to be a heavy user of computer. But but well, those who are light users, they just use it to type document once in a while. And all they do is um, they probably watch, um, you know, videos on their, their laptop. Those can be referred to as light users. So they can probably do their own maybe every two, two weeks or monthly, as the case may be. So heavy users should take preventive maintenance serious so that their system do, does not, I mean, the system uh, do not start behaving, uh, you know, poorly, performing uh, poorly, like slow performance, um, hanging sessions, and and uh, others. Uh, preventive maintenance also include uh, scanning your system regularly for for virus, so that uh, virus will not, uh, you know cause 
your system to have problem. Also, it also involves updating your antivirus. And because if you have antivirus in your system, you're not updating it regularly on the internet, your computer will be exposed to new uh, viruses. So your antivirus is as good as the, the current updates of your, of your antivirus uh, um, you know, um, engine. You know, you know, we talk about the, the database of your antivirus. That is the detection engine. So if that is not updated regularly, your antivirus will not be able to catch or detect as, uh, new uh, viruses or trojans or um, or what have you. So that is preventive. Then corrective maintenance, okay, or breakdown maintenance. This is the type of maintenance that you need to carry out when a system or subsystem finally collapses. So. What, is talk, what this is talking about is that this is the type you carry out when a system has broken down. Probably when the system cannot boot again. Or when the system um, is booting, but it's not getting to desktop, it's stopping halfway. Or the system is hanging, but cannot proceed from that hanging stage. Or when you have uh, the system uh, giving you black blank screen, all these things are corrective. These are system breaking down that you cannot even make use of the system at all. So corrective maintenance will be carried out when this happens, and you will need to get your tools. We probably open uh, the system unit. Or if it's your laptop, you need to open the laptop and check for power connection, check for RAM, all these things. You may need to touch one or two um, hardware components. So that is what we talk about, corrective or breakdown maintenance. Now, we are talking about the you know, three types of maintenance is the routine maintenance. Now, this is actually a regular schedule or timetable strictly adhered to by the owner of the computer and a third party. I mean, and the and the maintenance company. So that will be performing the maintenance on the system regularly. This can be monthly. This can be bi-monthly. And this can be. Um, um six month interval this can be um quarterly now it depends on the the type of um, usage the, the 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 computer you know is put into now if if we have heavy usage, then it should be irregular. If it is light, it should be, um, it should be uh, probably um, not too regular, probably. For example, the heavy user may have um, a monthly. If it is light, you may have bi-monthly or quarterly. Uh, for instance, I worked with a company in Lagos when I was doing my IT, and uh, the service, you know, computers for um, uh, the, 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 the service computers for for Leventis United for Le for, for Leventis Technical, sorry, and they, they deal with Oliver T business system at that time. Um, you know, some uh, about you know, two decades ago, about roughly 20 years ago, when computers were not seen everywhere. So, and the, the companies cannot afford to have their internal, you know, uh, maintenance personnel. So this 
uh, UBA that time, I remember, they, 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 they have to enter into a, a maintenance contract with that company that I work with. And we do go every month. We go around their, their um, branches, Lagos, in Ibadan, in Abeokuta, in Bini, and uh, all the other places. So the uh, service, so because this is, uh, is, 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 it is zoned so that we'll be able to concentrate on this. Anytime there is any emergency, we get a call from them, we'll have to go there. So this is a contract uh, that you can say is a routine maintenance contract that have to do with, you know, uh, performing preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance. Anytime we go on those uh, tour. And when there are emergency, we may have to go to carry out corrective maintenance. So the next thing is a computer system is a modular system made up of several modular parts or components. So computer system is not just one component. So and this will help you to understand what is a system. A system is the interconnection of several parts or several components. And that means you need to understand the workings of each part or each component. So these modular parts of this component, they work together to form a functional whole. And each component has one or more specific relationships to other components in the system. And each component has one or more expected behaviors. So all these things will help us to understand that troubleshooting a computer system is quite different from, um, you know, other electronics, you know, because even though with electronics, we have the system and system, but we normally do circuit and sub circuit. Okay. So, and the components. So computer system deal with, you know, many circuits for me, it's a, 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 even a modular part, a part. And those parts we now work together to become a system. So now we need to understand some of the components we have. Each of these components or parts, they are also made up of subsystems. So, uh, computer system can be a bit complex. You have monitor, you have uh, keyboard, mouse, hard disk drive, memory, and uh, CD, CD ROM drive, all these, and uh, even um, DVD drive. All these are themselves made up of sub circuits and systems, sub systems. So, therefore, the main challenge of computer system is understanding the techniques of troubleshooting the computer system when there's a problem. Now, what is now troubleshooting? is the process of detecting, isolating, and repairing faults in a given system. Troubleshooting is a process of detecting, isolating, and repairing faults in a given system. Because of this, we need to understand that proper knowledge and understanding of the behavior of each of this, of the component, each of the component that made up the computer system is very, very important. Very, very important. You must have proper knowledge, proper understanding of the behavior of each of the components that made up the computer system. And when you understand that, Troubleshooting can be a little bit easier when you know that we have to do swapping and we have to do eliminating. Now, swapping and eliminating is just based on your knowledge of the operation of each of the components or parts that are working together to form the computer system. When you see a problem, you 
quickly link it to the component or part that performs that function that is not being carried out now, that is not available now. Okay? Uh, just like when you have a car, you know, a car is easy to know which part is having problem with the car. If your car, if your tire punctures, you know that the car will not move properly. So you know you can see it easily. But whether there are some things that have when they happen, they are they are internal to the car that may need to open the bonnet and check. So the same thing with computer system. You need to understand that we can swap some parts to confirm and we can eliminate some problems by looking at what is actually happening. So now there are simple rules that experienced troubleshooters carry out. Simple rules that experienced troubleshooters follow. Number one, we identify the exact nature of the problem. You have to be very definite, exact. What is the problem at hand? For instance, if the problem is that the system is not booting to desktop, that is a problem. Or the system is not displaying anything on the screen, no indicator light showing on the computer and the system unit. That is a problem. So you'll be able to know where to go. Then you are isolate the cause of the problem. You have to isolate the cause of the problem so that you can know the exact cause. Because in computer system maintenance, one problem, or let me say one symptom can be as a result of two or three possible causes. So you, mean you need to isolate each of the one of these possible causes. Then you now need to resolve the problem. Resolving means solve the problem. After isolating it, then you have to solve it. Isolating means you specifically detect the problem, know which particular part is responsible. Resolving means you have to repair that part or replace that part. Now, the next thing is let's look at identify the problems. We we'll look at the outward, we have to observe outward symptoms, then we form a, a hypothesis, likely causes, as I mentioned. So we isolate the problems by testing the hypothesis, swapping and eliminating, and looking at our understanding of the various components behavior, performance of the various components. We know which one has problem. And then we now swap. We replace with a good one and see what happens. Then we now check if the problem has been solved. When the problem has been solved, then if we need to repair that part, we do that. If we need to buy a new one, we do that. That we will resolve the problem finally. Now, components to troubleshoot. Uh, we have monitor. This is a television-like device which displays the activities of the computer part time. When computer when monitor is coming on, now we have different types of monitor. We have LCD, we have um, OLED, we have LED monitors, we have OLED, um, we have a high definition, uh, we have a um, projector now can serve as a monitor. And we have all these uh, other types of monitors. But the common one that is fast disappearing now is the CRT monitor, the cathode ray tube. Uh, now, the first thing when monitors are coming on is to check the power source and the power cable. Now, when number two problem that you can come out, the monitor is on but not displaying anything. But not displaying anything. So check note of that. Now, you check the data cable from the from the system unit to the monitor. 
Uh, it could be any type of uh, data cable. Uh, if it is laptop, the same thing will check internal data cable. Uh, the same thing if you are connecting to a projector, you check whether it is, you know, HDMI, whether it's VGA, and all that, or other type of connection. Check the brightness and contrast button button if they are set to zero. That can happen. Um, keyboard is like a typewriter like device. So most of the time you check the cable connection. If they are inbuilt to the system like laptop, you check whether the keyboard uh, itself has gone bad, which you have to replace. Or if each key is having problem, you can check and when you see keyboard beep, beeping continuously, when the system starts, it's, it's likely there is a key that is hooked, that is pressed continuously. So you may need to do some uh, lubrication for those um, separate keyboards. So this, those uh, stand, standalone keyboards, standard keyboards. But if they are inbuilt keyboard to the laptop or, desk or, 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 or notebooks, then you may need to uh, open them up and blow them. Most of the time you have to replace the keyboard uh, because they are very cheap now. Now, talk about mouse. The same thing, mouse not responding. Check whether it's probably connected. If it is onboard mouse, if it is, um, not, uh, um, if it is the, the one that is inbuilt to the laptop, uh, that one that is uh, its touch pad, you need to do a bit of probably opening up the laptop to check whether the cables are loose or. But now we having more or less of um, mouse that are external in form of. Uh, Optical mouse, they are becoming, um, you know, popular. Then we also have wireless mouse. In that case, you check the battery whether the battery is weak. We need to replace the battery. Okay, we don't have ball bearing now. Uh, now, for the hard disk, the hard disk drive is a permanent storage device found on computer systems, very fragile, must be handled very carefully. If you hear string noise when being access, you pack up data and replace the hard disk because it's going to crash very soon. You can have hard disk, yeah, the system be coming slowly when you have insufficient disk space. It is some files or also some programs to get more space that you have to be running disk cleanup regularly on hard drives that are heavily used. Now, no fixed disk drive found. This can be data cable and power connectors issue. As in fact, when, you're, when, when, when you are uh, uh, dealing with ID drives and uh, SATA drives, it's a easy problems. Now, when, when we look at DVD drives and CD-ROM drives, you cannot access the drive. This data cable and power connector can be the solution. We check whether they are connected properly. Uh, whether something has gone wrong with it, then this can not, not be read. That means your DVDs or CD-ROMs cannot be read. Either the, you check these discs themselves, whether they, they have uh, pronounced scratches. But if the discs are working very well on other machines, on other systems, it may be that your lens is weak, the lens of your DVD drive. It be dirty, we need to clean it uh, with the lens cleaner. Now, if indicator light is on constantly, maybe the, uh, the data cable orientation is, is not correct. Maybe the, the, the cable is uh, inversely connected. It's, it's connected the wrong way. When you're connecting your DVD drive and you're connecting your CD drive, you see that pin one, you're going to the red, um, the red mark, on the ID cable should go to pin one on the um, on the drive side. 
memory, RAM, the computer memory or RAM is the working storage of the computer. Whatever will be run, any program that will be run on the system must be loaded into the RAM. So the higher the capacity of the RAM, the better the performance of the computer system. Now, if your computer is working but not displaying anything, it's likely the RAM is not well suited because if the RAM, uh, the what we mean by working, we mean we mean is that we mean that the the the, the power indicator shows, and it seems that the power fan is working and it's trying to boot, but because there is no RAM to to uh, to load the program, it will just be looking at you like uh, you know like uh, let me say actually, actually talk it, it should just look at you like that so there'll be no display so you have to reset the ram you have to open the system shut down the system reset the ram maybe this laptop to the same thing reset the ram and uh go back to on the system it should come up now computer two let me problem two computer not recognize the ram uh, that is a major problem. If you want to make upgrade of your RAM, you need to check if the RAM is compatible. This normally happens when you are doing upgrade. You have to make sure that you follow all the proper protocols, all the proper procedures for upgrading your RAM. You must use the right type of RAM. When we get there, we'll talk about all the type of RAM we have. For laptop, uh, we have the SOD, we have the different type. Uh, so, Let's move on to the next. There are times after your hardware problem has been solved, you also need to carry out software problems. You need to solve software problems. So computer problems are not only that of hardware manufacturing. Software as well can make a computer to misbehave. This often arises from improper shutdown or when a new software is added. To correct software problems, most times a system restore should be done or the newly installed software should be removed to avoid the problem. If this does not solve the problem, the system may need to be reinstalled as a last resort. But there are other uh, intricate procedures we carry out as experienced users. But these are just for uh, every other, I mean, as experienced uh, maintenance, you know, uh, personnel, but you can also look at the current scenario and you can decide whether you need to do, um, go into safe mode to solve problems, safe mode and all these things. Precautions should be installed, computer should be installed in a wet ventilator room. Liquid soda must not be brought into the computer room. Food particles must not be left in the computer room. Computer in charge should guide against such electricity. Computer must not be worked on when see power. Computer should be covered when